Back at the bunker doing some more electrics. Uh, I'm wiring up this solar panel. So a 30 watt solar panel and then it comes along this cable and then there's the quick release SAE plug there and that connects up to the top hat and inside we have the electrical uh, pneumatic airline and antenna connector. So that's the antenna connector for the radio. That's the pneumatic airline connector for the radio to blow up the uh, or pump up the uh, telescopic mast for the antenna. And then this is a knife and socket and knife and plug. And that was used originally to connect up a 12 volt generator. And that was to then charge the batteries below ground when you were going to be using the bunker during a nuclear war. So what I used to do is keep a battery below ground all the time and then keep it charged. And the solar panel used to be mounted here, but the uh, cows kept knocking it off. So what I'm going to do now is just keep the, uh, the battery in that shed there getting charged by that panel. In fact, I'll lock the focus. Um, so yeah, so that in there, I keep my batteries and then charge it off that 50 watt. Yes, I've been doing a bit more painting as well. I just wanted to get the gate, a couple more coats of varnish on the gate and get the grass cut. But yes, solar panel is plugged in. So that's providing 30 watts then down or well, on a good day, that's providing 30 watts down into a solar battery charger. And uh, yeah, we'll go down below ground now and we'll hook a battery up to it and uh, I'll show you that working. So jump cut. Okay, so I am using the a torch here at the moment, just showing you that currently the battery is charging. And I just brought a little small battery with me today. Get that in focus. Yeah, just brought a little small battery with me today just to test this. Now, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use this 12 volt cigarette socket and then all the batteries that I use, I have two different ones. Uh, I'm going to put a 12 volt plug on them and then I can just plug it quick release into these. And then the red cable you see there coming off the right hand side, that is going to be then the main power connection that will power all the lights. So I have that hooked up at the moment. So I'll go and turn on the lights. And as you can see, it's reasonably dark. Yeah, and there's the lights on. So that's everything being run off grid at the moment, which is pretty cool. Now the battery is actually not 100% charged. As you can see, the voltage has dropped right down there to 10.8 volts so that battery needs a really good charge I just sort of grabbed the first SLA battery that I could find from the house but uh, yeah there we go off grid in the bunker so this is the way I used to have it uh, but after a really really dark winter where sort of all my batteries went flat because the solar panels didn't get enough light to charge uh, yeah I sort of took that system out and uh, reverted it just to do charging the batteries at home and also charging them in my shed. But uh, the problem with that was when I wanted to come here and uh, come to the bunker, I had to plug in the generator to provide power down here. So uh, this is a lot better. Um, it just means if I want to come down and stay here the night, yes, I can still run the generator uh, and then have 240 volt electricity down here, run a you know kettle or run the radiator or run a TV if I want to. But uh, what I really wanted to do is, say for instance, I need to get up at you know four o'clock in the morning to go to the top bathroom or something. I uh, having 12 volt in there just so I can turn on the light and see what I'm doing. And also turn on the light in the morning because it's, it's pitch black down here. Uh, you really can't see anything in the morning here when, uh, when you wake up. So yeah, having that makes things a lot easier. So I have a couple of other little jobs I want to do down here. And uh, I've got the I've modified the inverter I had that, uh, you know, transformed 240 volt into 12 volt. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll get that plugged in and then I'll show you how that works. So another jump cut. Okay, so that's the next job done. So what I have done here is wired into the post electrical circuit and not connected to this is uh, this quick release connector. And then there's the 12 volt adapter. And then where have I put, there it is there. So I cut the end off and then wired on the female side. So I can connect those together, plug that into the 240 volt, and then that will supply me power down here as well. So if I don't have a battery with me, I can go with generator power. So you can see that is charging the battery currently. 
charging 13 volts. It says a load is available and it is charging. So the solar panel is doing its job. So that is good. Just uh, unfortunately, just not enough power just to run the lights 100% at the moment. It would, you know, it'll work, but I can definitely tell that that light is not as bright as it usually is. You can see there the, how dark it's got. I'll turn off the, uh, as you can see there, there's the, the light on. So I am getting power, which is good. And that's the uh, sort of the big bulb. I use that when I'm doing my tours and if I'm staying down here. But uh, the power they would have had originally just ran that little bulb there. And uh, to simulate the uh, different times of day. Oh, I have that bulb. This light turned off. But uh, yeah, to simulate the different times of day, they would have uh, had that bulb. I think I know what the problem with that is. I have to uh, reverse the wiring. Uh, when I rewired the post, I uh, I didn't uh, double check everything, so I think that's the, the cause of that not lighting up. I just have to swap the wiring around in that now, uh, but that shouldn't take too long. But uh, yeah, if there's anything else, I'll uh, I'll do another jump cut. I uh, also want to uh, test the wiring in that as well, just before I finish up. So yeah, back in a second. Yes, I was right. It was a reversed polarity. So there you go. So that will be your, uh, your sort of your night tower. Your, you would use that bulb as much as humanly possible because it was the least voltage. But uh, you have a switch here that you could uh, switch between. So you can switch the strip light on. You weren't allowed to have these on at the same time. It was either this one or this one. So there's your little strip light on. And then flick it over. And there's that bulb on. And then over here, I have the controls for the uh, these lights here, and then controls for this light here. There you go. And that gives you all the light you need. So that sort of just makes it more realistic. This is you know the lighting that they would have used originally. So uh, that's why I like to do it like that. But yeah, that's good. Now the last thing I need to do is test the polarity and all these cables here, just to make sure that when I've sort of tidied up this box and uh, took a lot of stuff out of it. Uh, I just want to make sure that everything in this is the right polarity so I don't blow the radio up. No jump cut. Yeah, checked all the wiring in this and it's uh, it's doing what it should be. So I've got spare wires down here. I can run a little fan and stuff and uh, a few other little bits and pieces of electronics in here. So I had it all inside the radio box just to make it easier. And then this, um, I can use that for quite a few little accessories, 12 volt accessories, but I have something special which I'll bring down. Uh, it's for my next open day, but I'll bring it down the next time I'm doing a video and um, I'll let you see it. It's a little sort of miniature version of the original sort of display boards that they uh, would have used in the group headquarters for the Royal Observer Corps. And it uh, lights up Perspex screen, lights up and it has all the map of Northern Ireland on it. So I'll bring that down the next time, but that's to make it light up. But yeah, other than that, the post is great. Uh, nice and dry. Uh, the leak hasn't gotten any worse in the entrance shaft. So I'm gonna fix that the next time I'm here. Um, just get some, I don't know what to do. I might drill a hole where the leak is and put some uh, sort of uh, silicone uh, sealer into it just to see if that does anything. Uh, it's worked before, so hopefully it'll work again. But uh, yeah, battery is charging. Battery is very flat. I'm actually quite surprised how flat it is. Uh, I haven't had it charged for quite a while. So uh, yes, it uh, it needs a good charge overnight. So I'll bring that home and uh, hook it up and get it charged. Because these bulbs, I mean, I think that bulb's eight watts, if I remember correctly. That's six watts, and I think that's six watts as well. So you know, it's it's not drawing huge amounts of power, and that's the reason why I went LEDs. And uh, obviously, being uh, being totally off grid here, you are pretty uh, self reliant on. Uh, Power is a big thing. Water, not so bad. It's, uh, you can bring water with you and you don't, you're not using that much. But obviously power is a big factor, especially if you're if something happened and you actually had to come down and use the bunker for its intended purpose. You want to know that you have a, a reliable power source. So I do keep quite a lot of uh, deep cycle batteries at home that are always on charge. Um, I have solar panels in my garden that uh, keep them charged all the time. 
and uh, have a couple of battery chargers as well at 240 volt ones that they can deep cycle the uh, you know do a deep charge on the batteries every now and again just to keep them conditioned and then i have some little sla batteries sealed lead acid batteries that i use for projects at home and uh, i have quite a few of those as well and they're not that expensive if you need to get more of them but yeah that's sort of off grid a bit of how to do off grid in your bunker solar is definitely the way to go for little projects like this and uh, you know i wasn't wouldn't hesitate to use it again um you know with a shed or something like that there for lighting and uh, for quite a while actually my garden lights all ran off solar uh but now that i've switched to uh to led garden lights it's they use so little power that uh, you don't really notice it on your electricity bill anyway but uh, i might go back and uh, get some more uh, 12 volt lighting is a lot better now so uh, i might go back to running all my uh, outdoor lights on solar again but uh, yeah that was another little project and uh, i uh, obviously i cut the grass and did some painting as well but i didn't want you to bore you with all that stuff that's i'd cover that in other videos but uh, yeah that was a little bit more electric work and the next time i'm doing a bunker video will be uh, with the carrier control point and that will be on the surface and uh, we'll be getting this running again the way it was intended so uh, yeah look out for that in the next couple of weeks but listen folks as always thank you very very much for watching and i'll see you all again soon bye bye